Hello and welcome back to 5 Minute Geography with me Stephen Doyle. Each week I'll be uploading a 5 minute video explaining as simply as possible the world around us. Please hit the like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on future content. If you'd like me to cover a specific topic please put it in the comment section below. Today in this video we're going to look at the disaster that was the Japanese earthquake of 2011. On the 11th of March 2011, an earthquake measuring 9.0 on the Richter scale struck off the coast of Japan. The earthquake occurred on the subduction zone along the Eurasian and the Pacific plate boundary. As the Pacific plate subducts beneath the Eurasian plate, it caused huge amounts of friction and this friction began a build up of pressure. The pressure had been building up over centuries before the Pacific plate finally jolted free. This sudden movement caused a strong earthquake 70 kilometers off the coast of Japan at a depth of 32 kilometers beneath the crust. Japan has the most advanced earthquake and tsunami warning systems in the world. The system delivered a warning to the Japanese a full minute before the tremors reached the land. This allowed high speed trains to stop safely production lines to stop, and dangerous machinery to be deactivated before the shaking began. All residents also received a text message to their phones warning them of the earthquake. A tsunami warning was sent soon after the earthquake, telling civilians to go to higher ground to protect themselves. However, the height of the tsunami was hugely underestimated. This caused a large percentage of those who received the warning to ignore safety precautions. It was predicted that a 20 meter wave would hit and it was assumed that the tsunami walls would be easily able to withstand it. As the Pacific plate subducted, it caused the Eurasian plate to uplift suddenly, creating an excess hump of water on the surface of the Pacific Ocean. The earthquake triggered a 39 meter high tsunami that devastated the eastern coast of Japan. Less than an hour after the earthquake had struck, the first of many tsunami waves hit Japan's coastline. The waves were so high that they breached Japan's tsunami defense system. The wave rushed as far as 10 kilometers inland, destroying buildings and other infrastructure. Many buildings that were destroyed contained people who had fled to higher floors for safety. The waves also destroyed the cooling system for the Fukushima nuclear power plant, causing a catastrophic meltdown. Radioactive waste still leaks from the power plant into the Pacific Ocean every single day. This has destroyed marine habitats and made the surrounding area uninhabitable. In total, over 18,000 people were killed, most of whom were drowned by the tsunami. Some 130,000 buildings were completely destroyed, while a further 1 million buildings were damaged. The convergence of the two plates that caused the earthquake was so powerful that it shortened the length of a day on the earth by a microsecond. After its failure to accurately predict the size of the wave, Japan upgraded its tsunami warning system. The disaster cost the Japanese economy over 200 billion as the expensive cleanup operation continues. Radiation from the Fukushima plant continues to leak despite the best efforts of experts and volunteers. Over 1,000 aftershocks have hit Japan since the earthquake, with magnitudes of up to 7.9 on the Richter scale. And that was the Japanese earthquake of 2011. It's so unreal that the earthquake was so strong that it actually shortened the length of a day by a microsecond. I would love to hear your thoughts and comments on this devastating earthquake. How do you think you would react? How do you think you would survive? Please leave your comments in the comment section below. I've been Stephen Doyle with 5 Minute Geography. Please hit the like and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on future content. And again, if you'd like me to cover any specific topic, please put it in the comment section below.